So, here we have a model. It's a very nice model done by a friend. And we're only gonna be working on the eyes mechanism. So I'm going to assume that you have the head mechanism all done. Um, and you have a bone that you can parent the head to. In our case, target head. Right, so we're going to, first of all, select your eye that has the UV map on it. If you haven't done so already, just get an image texture, throw that on there. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do Shift A and we're going to search for a mapping node. Right, and we're going to plug that into the vector. And to the vector of this mapping node, we're going to add a texture coordinate. Texture coordinate. There we go. So you've got all these different options here. We're going to use UV because this model is nice and UV unwrapped. As you can see, the other one's probably a better example. <laughs> Never mind. It's all UV unwrapped. It's all very good. So once you've done that, a good thing to do is to split your window into two, right? And then on one side, I'm going to choose the right side because that makes my brain happy. I'm going to choose to pin it with this little icon and on the left side we're going to pin the left side as well and we're going to do the same thing I'm going to use node wrangler, node wrangler because it's easier but you can do this in native blender if you like so make sure that the UV is plugged in so that we're referencing the UV make sure this is set to a point otherwise it won't work this mechanism don't know why but that's just the way it does and you'll notice that the eyes look a bit strange, right? Um, that can be fixed later. Every model is different depending on how your UV is on your character. Um, but that's, that's going to be something that you can figure out. I'm going to show you the base mechanism and show you how to tweak it for your model. So, in our rig, we're going to shift S, selecting our target head bone or whatever your head bone is. This is just a reference point, it doesn't really matter too much, but we're going to do a Shift S and snap our cursor to it. We can do this in pose mode, we can do it in edit mode. I choose edit mode because it's easier. Um, pose mode usually chooses the head of the bone. And we're going to go into side view, Shift A. It's in a different collection, hang on. <laughs> Shift A, never mind. Y. Make sure to choose a... <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Make sure you have a, a collection that's unhidden, that's unhidden, so shown. Shift A, and it should add a bone. Try not to add two bones like I did, but add a bone. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Now I'm going to align it with world space, so I'm going to do Shift N and choose the global Z axis. And what that basically does is it takes the Z axis of your bone and aligns it with whichever one you choose. So we chose global positive Z, so our Z axis of our bone is choosing the positive Z axis of our scene. So I'm going to take it back to where it was and we're just gonna move it along the Y axis just about as far as you want. And this will be our main eye controller. We're gonna scale it down. I'm gonna go into solid view so that my computer doesn't explode. And we will just rename this control eyes. Right, so you can scale it down even more because that's a bit big and just arrange it however you want. All right, and as I said, you can move this down here. You can have it wherever you want. I just snapped the cursor to there because it it's nice and organized like that, and it's easier. And then, we'll head into the drivers, straight in. <laughs> so back to pre material preview, what we're gonna do is in pose mode, you can't do this in edit mode, in pose mode, up here, if you don't know this panel is end panel, just press N on your keyboard, and we have our different location values, and this is what we're going to use to drive the mapping of our node tree and it's going to be quite simple so we're going to right click and down here we've got copy as new driver right there's many ways to do a driver but th this is the easiest way and down in our mapping node let me just make this a bit bigger 
we're going to paste this into the X location of our mapping node. Right, so now this moves like this. When you move the X, it moves the X of the mapping node. But we don't want that. It's, it's mirrored. And we don't want that. I've said that twice, I don't know why I said that twice. Anyway, we're going to go into the driver properties. So right click on this driver, you can see it's driver because it's purple, duh. And edit driver, you'll get this little menu pop up. And from average value, up at the top, we're going to change it to scripted expression. And that just gives us more, much more control over what we do. So I'm going to put this in brackets simply because I think it helps a computer work out the maths. And we're going to do asterisk, which is star and negative one. And what timesing it by negative one does is it inverts it. So now it works as it should. Okay, for now we're only going to do the one I, and then we'll go at the end, we'll paste it over to the other side, do a few tweaking, mainly making it inverse so that it works and you should have a working mechanism for your eyes. And before we go ahead, we're going to parent this to our head bone, just so that it all follows nicely. Et voila! So we're going to do the same for the Z location. We don't want to choose Y because you can't move a texture back and forth. So we're just going to use the Z because it aligns with our axes. And by the way, if you cannot see that, if you go down here, viewport display in your armature tab, you can choose axes and change it to the head or the tail. I like the tail because that's just the way I like to rig, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. So we're going to do that again. Right click on the Z axis and choose copy as new driver. And here, instead of doing the Z, we want the Y because the UV editor uses Y and X. So just like a mathematical graph. So we're going to paste the driver test our rig, it doesn't work. That's weird, hang on. Ah, well they didn't have that selected. <laughs> Let's try that again. So, selecting the right bone this time. <laughs> right click location, copy as new driver, and just paste over the top of that driver. Now we move it up, it's inverse again, so we know what to do, we're gonna right click the driver, edit driver, change it from average value to scripted expression, put it in brackets because it's just easier to separate your expression and times it by negative one. And now, wow, you have, you've got an eye, right? But this is only controlling, this is going to control both eyes and that's not ideal because maybe you want the eyes to be independent. Well, we can do that. So back in edit mode, select our control eyes, and I'm just going to duplicate this along the X axis. And I like to scale it down just to make it more visually pleasing. You don't have to do that, but you can. Parent it to the control eyes with control P, and we're going to rename it I.L. Right, and we can symmetrize that, and it should, as long as your armature is aligned with world origin, which, let me, <laughs> origin, floor, axis, there we go. Our armature is aligned with the world origin. So that's why Symmetrize works. Anywho, I'm going to unhide all these again, just to make it a little bit cleaner. So now when you move the eyes, the control eyes, your individual eyes should follow, that's perfect. So now what we're going to do to make this eye control the um, the individual left eye, we're going to go into the drivers, again, <laughs> edit the driver, and here we're going to add an input variable. And we're going to change it from single property to transform channel. Okay, and then we're going to target our armature. And for the bone, we're going to type in i.l, because that is our left eye. Change it from world space to local space, otherwise you'll get a funky number that won't make sense. <laughs> so local space just zeroes it out so that whenever you move this bone, 
that value will change, as you can see here. So now we want to add this transform on top of the driven value for this, so that they work independently. So we're going to edit driver and just add this to our equation. So again, I'm going to put this in brackets and do plus var, which is the name of our variable. Right, and you see that that works, but if I change the name of this to var x, it's not going to work because um, our expression isn't referencing the right, the right name. So it's very case sensitive. I'm going to change to, to var. <laughs> that works so we can test it and it's inverted again so we've seen this problem edit driver and then we can put this in brackets and then we can do times negative one and remember to close your brackets again so now that works independently on the x-axis fantastic and the control eyes work now you might notice once you move past a threshold, the other eye will appear. That's because our texture is using repeat. So same for the Y. We're going to add an input variable, source our armature, and type in I.L. Make sure it is a transform channel first, then I.L again. And this time we're going to choose the Z location in local space. Add this to our equation. So I'm going to bracket everything again, keep it nice and tidy, and do plus var. And then I'm going to preemptively put it in brackets because I have a feeling that it's going to be inverted again, which it is. So right click in your bracket, do times negative one to invert the value. And now we have a perfect mechanism and it's it's bound to our target head so when we move our head controller the eye still works and everything still works but now you're thinking oh we haven't done the other side and that's pretty pretty simple to be honest um, so we're going to over here copy our driver and on our I just realized I've named them the wrong, wrong way around. Never mind. Copy our driver over to the X to the X. Paste our driver. Do the same for the Y. Copy driver. Paste driver. Let me make sure all my transforms are, are cancelled. Why is that saying negative one? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's such a small value, it won't, it won't make a difference. This didn't happen when I was doing testing, so average blender things. So we'll test our rig, and we'll see that the up and down motion is fine, but the left and right are not fine. <laughs> so in our X, which is the left and right, we're going to edit driver, and first of all, change it from the I.L to I.R. That's a very important thing so that this works. Uh, I didn't enter, there we go. <laughs> As you can see, it is inverted, but here's the thing, because we've already inverted it here, we can just take away all of this. And if you wanted to, you can take away the brackets, but I, I won't bother. So now that works, but our control eyes doesn't work because we also have to do the same for that. I am going to remove these though because they're a bit visually noisy. So now, hey presto, it works. <laughs> but the up and down doesn't because it is still sorting the left eye over here. So we'll change that from .l to .r and you have a working eye rig. Nine times out of ten, the most problems you'll come into is um, the inverting of the different values. Okay, and just make sure that you're using local space, targeting the right bone, 
and everything should be perfectly fine. There you go. It's as easy as that. Now, as I said at the start of the video, he looks a little bit derpy. Um, that's because of the way the plane is oriented. So what we will do, um, my friend has done some testing and has found out that if we add onto, oh whoops, if we add 0 0.15, hang on, we take away 0 0.15, it will center it in the middle. The way you test that is just use different values. So I could do 0 0.20, that doesn't work. 0.1, that's close. I actually think that looks better, but for this rig, 0.15 is the best way to go about it. And then do the same for the other side, but this time plus 0.15 because we're mirroring on the along the ax along the y axis or x axis x mirror probably the x. I know Blender. I've been doing this. <laughs> it's one of the axes. So now you have a rig. But yeah, I haven't seen a tutorial that's that's done this, and it took some workshopping to do, but it works, and you can use any texture you want.